No, 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 there's no space, they yell. Unheard, unheeded in the chaos. In the land of rivers, millions on the move. A panicked rush to leave Dhaka. After the government declared not a national emergency, but a 10-day national holiday to combat COVID-19. In a poor country with close to 180 million people crammed in, social distancing and self-isolation are luxuries for the rich. On Independence Day, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina said Bangladesh had courageously faced down past dangers. We won our war of independence, she said, and coronavirus is a war too. We will win again. As news of the sweeping contagion spread last month, a well-meaning religious leader gathered the faithful to pray for deliverance offering healing Quranic verses. The mass prayer event triggered alarm. The true extent of infection in Bangladesh is unknown. An attempted national lockdown has left already impoverished people, jobless, hungry, increasingly desperate and dependent on handouts. With experts warning that only the immediate implementation of aggressive countermeasures can avert what they call unimaginable damage the government's deployed troops to enforce social distancing. Streets sprayed with disinfectant. A senior Bangladeshi doctor insisting on anonymity told Channel 4 News they'd done what they could to prepare, but resources are limited. Our people are not aware of the danger, he said. If there is mass infection, our health system will be totally devastated. This disease has already disrupted what seem to be stable, well-resourced nations. So Bangladesh has an enormous challenge in front of it, undoubtedly. In the capital, the lockdown has left the already impoverished, hungry and desperate, dependent on the generosity of wealthier people. Koral slum, Dhaka, a vast, tin-roofed shanty whose 50,000 densely packed residents have no ivory towers to retreat to. The people of Koral know about the virus, but feel helpless. The lady in red says if they can't work, they'll starve. And her friend complains that food is being distributed unfairly. Asma's aware of the two-meter rule. The government is distributing food to the poor and has offered emergency support to four million Bangladeshis in the garment sector, many of whom now face destitution after global clothing brands cancelled two and a half billion pounds worth of orders, including several leading British retailers. The Garment Manufacturers Association has appealed to fashion firms to honour contracts. If we don't have that support for the next three months, we will be having 4.1 million workers literally out on the streets. And this is a social chaos we cannot afford. Only a handful of firms have said they will pay for existing orders. In the far south of one of the world's most densely populated countries, the world's biggest refugee camp, crammed with over a million Rohingya Muslims who fled ethnic cleansing in next door Burma. Many live 12 or more to a room in bamboo and plastic shacks, a density four times that of high-rise New York City. Prime conditions for corona, which thrives in confined spaces threatening to turn crisis into catastrophe. Loudspeakers mounted on auto rickshaws broadcast COVID-19 warnings and public health advice. Mobile networks and the internet have long been curtailed in these camps by the government on unspecified security grounds. So volunteers have resorted to spreading the message by megaphone. 
Sayeda Begum, a mum with seven children, says she's alarmed by what she's hearing about this deadly disease. She's teaching the corona scrub and top tips, which for most of us are life-saving practicalities, but here are largely theory. We need so much soap and water, she says. One family might have 10 or 15 members. All need soap. Every house is full of people. How can we stay so far apart? We're really worried. For 22-year-old Senwara, the message is simple. Wash and pray. The imam and religious scholars say it's a curse from Allah, she says. So we have to pray more. We have to read the Quran and beg Allah to help us. Death stalked the Rohingya people in the pre-corona era. They're used to it. The resilient but very vulnerable and hopelessly ill-equipped to cope if, or more likely when, COVID-19 strikes.